The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. This is Tuesday, July the 9th. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon Eastern Time, 877-927-6648 is the number to call. And certainly today's a great day for those calls. Why? Because we're at a very important moment in the market. <clears throat> Based on my work, uh, we've got the E-minis in leg B, the S&P E-mini in leg B, Maybe I could call that a phantom peak over there. No need to right now. So I've got that. I've got the 120-minute chart getting real toppy. Peak E up probably right here. If there's no new high, but it hasn't broken down. It could recycle. But I'm watching this area very closely for a number of reasons, and I'll go through them one by one. We'll go to the Dow. And let me just say, great programming here all the day from 9 o'clock in the morning. You've got Steve Rhodes, fabulous two hours. Then I come on 11 o'clock to 12, straight off. You've got the options hour, think of some options hour. You've got uh, uh, Del Martin. You've got Dave White. You've got Andy Hecht. And then you've got Tom O'Brien wrapping the day up. Ah, just fabulous program right through. Now let's go through these things. The Dow, I-N-D-U is in leg C, having broken the resistance point, but the day is young. I need to see a decisive break and close above that downtrend line. Why? There's a technique that I call, uh, first of all, the inside track resistance repellent zone. That's number one. Number two is there's also a technique that I use that's called the um, ex it's an expanding wedge formation, a declining wedge formation. And it says if you're making lower lows and lower highs off to a significant peak, in this in this case 15,542 was the all-time high, May the 22nd, in the Dow, and you break decisively above that trend line, if the technicals are starting to strengthen, there's a really good chance that if you break any peak on the left side of importance, in this case that would be the peak of June the, 9th, uh, June the 18th at 15,340, Break that, it says go to the next peak. The next peak will be at 15,521 on the 28th of May. Then finally you get the 15,542 level. That's number one. Now, another thing about it is I, I was asked a number, uh, I mentioned the other day the sandwich. Uh, this is not in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. This is something I developed many years later. For any of you who are using... Um, using technical analysis and using time frames. If you're looking at, say you're looking at the 10 minute, I like to use 10 minute when I'm doing intraday short term trading, maybe the E-minis or whatever, and you're looking at the 10 minute, let's say you go 10 minute and uh, let's call it 60 minute, and a, or let's say 10 minute, 30 minute and 120 minute charts. You will see very often if there's a very sharp pullback in the shorter time frame, it's called the 10 minute chart. I'm talking about a peak E and it really pulls back a, a good a good deal of uh, percentage points. What will happen is that sometimes that middle chart, in this case I'm talking about say the 30 minute, will start to see a deterioration in the technicals and the monthly, the, 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 the longer term one, the 60 or 120 minute chart, will show some deterioration. And what happens is it takes a long time, then for the very short term chart, to repair the damage in the weekly chart. And it can only do that by routing consistently and over a period of time to keep building up that look back period of uh, 12, 26, whatever it is, bars, to be able to get the technicals to improve considerably. And I'm always surprised when I'm looking at, say, let me, I wonder if I've got a chart here. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's look at ISRG. ISRG, I haven't looked at it today. I had a fabulous signal the other day. 
and I never took it on ISR. It would have just been an initial entry point on a short position, but I never took it. And there was only one reason. I was expecting one fractional higher pop to get that leg. Yeah, I didn't think you had to get it, but I thought, oh boy, over 516.07, I'd get that D and then I'd be ready because the technicals were fading. Plunges today down 85. Now look at this. You see the, the, the daily chart, the technicals, big turn down. But look at the weekly chart. It had already been turning down for some time, so that all that action to the upside never really did anything. And then the monthly chart is merely confirming that it was in a downtrend and now it's continuing in a downtrend. Hope I'm making myself clear. If you're looking at those charts on Tiger TV, I'm trying to show them as clearly as possible. So I need to go back to what I was talking about in the Dow, IND. That weekly chart has pulled back quite sharply and it's going to take a concerted effort in the daily of time and price going to the 50,542 level right now it's at 50,289 up $64 hey after two great days to have a third day with with action sort of mid session not even after not even two hours of trading that's very nice why because on a technical basis in on the price has broken out of that pattern that I call the falling X right there. Let me make it dark blue. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Right there. Okay. That's important. But it has to take out that candle right there. And close above it. Now what's important, and I'm going to go to another question. That was the first question on the, of the day. How do, What happens? How do you repair the damage? in a weekly chart, and you do it by having smaller time frames. That's number one. Number two, it depends on your chart uh, system that you have. I happen to use TradeStation. I had to call them again today. I lost a bunch of charts. I don't know what's happening here. It's very disconcerting. I, I said to them, I've been with them since they were Omega. This is back in 1980s. And then uh, since they were uh, super charts, and I've been there with them all the time, and they've changed to Trade Station. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, they've usually done pretty well in the things that I've asked, uh, but um, this is this is inexplicable. Inexplicable. I don't know what's happening. What happens is I suddenly lose the charts of the notated charts for some reason, and then when it comes back. I'm on a different library. It's the same platform, but they, they've picked up. Not the last save dates uh, of charts, which would be from last night at midnight. I'm always, that's when I always have uh, the backup goes into action. Um, but I, in fact, what happens is that I suddenly have charts from maybe a week or two or three weeks ago without all the information from the last two or three weeks. Or it could be two months ago. I, I just don't understand it. But... Their data is, the actual data is one of the best that I've come across. And I have, no matter how I count it, I've peaked D in the, in the uh, you should keep back of digital copies of Troy. No, yeah, I've, I've, I've got everything, Z in the den says. It is saved here. I haven't lost it. I've lost it as the next pickup point. Uh, it's there somewhere. I could go back. In fact, we had a little practice session this morning trying to get them back. Uh, I'm not sure that that's exactly the way to resolve it. I've got to figure something out. All I want is that if, for whatever reason, there's a, a, a power outage or anything, I want to be able to get the charts I was on at least until midnight last night. I don't mind having to redo any charts that I've done since then. Still a lot of charts, but it's only a few compared to thousands, the hundreds and hundreds. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's in state trade station. It's, um, it's just choosing automatically to go back to some previous edition instead of the immediate edition that I was working on. That's all. So, it goes to peak D from the low bar of uh, 6469 back in the th March of uh, 2009, and it goes to uh, th uh, 127600, uh, May of 2011, it pulls back to 10404. That starts a brand new buy uh, signal to buy mode, October of 2011, goes peak A, and that's my peak A. Peak A is at uh, 13,338.66, May of 2012, pulls back in one bar, hits that trend line, the inside track, 
starts another move up, goes to leg B and then peak B at 13,661.87. October of 2012 pulls back. <clears throat> now we've made a peak C at 50,542. That's the way my notation works. Now what's so interesting is if you want to look <clears throat> at other software packages, eventually they always catch up. I don't know what it is. Instead of maybe uh, if you're ahead, you now say D, you'll get to an E and an F, whereas I'm going to go to an E and then maybe that's the top. Whatever it is, it somehow works its way. Uh, but that's not the way you, you want data. I use the data here. It's always been very reliable. So, weekly peak D, trying to rally back towards the level of 50,542. Let's go to the S&P. I'll just run these real quickly now. S&P is at uh, 16, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 1649 up 9. Uh, the comp index is at 3,500 up 16. Gold, now this is very interesting. Gold is up 13 at 1247. Silver's up 8, 16 cents at 19.19. .19. Platinum's up, high grade copper's down. Whoa! High grade copper's down very sharply. Crude oil is down 11 cents at 103.03. Bonds are up 8.30 seconds, and the dollar, that's what I wanted to get to. The dollar's at 84.89. Look at this. This is the dollar chart, and this is what I've been telling subscribers. One of the reasons why, in a way, I didn't really mind getting stopped out of my the, the very small, tiny, go, very, I mean, real tiny gold position in a particular stock the other day. I said, of a tiny position, we're going to have small, two tiny positions, two half positions within that. Uh, and they got stopped out. A small loss, but this a loss is a loss. And our uh, trade on the equivalent of the GLD was stopped out. And that one, I'm a little. I probably should have tried to hang in there a little bit more because gold should bounce. But here's what I was looking at. Oh my goodness! I had gold in leg D. Uh, I'm sorry, the dollar in leg D on the index. And what I said is that the MACD and the stochastic are still so strong. I did not want to think that the dollar could pull back sharply other than to just have a little bit of a pullback until those technicals showed me that they could turn around and that V-shaped pattern with the breakout now in the weekly is very impressive. It's very impressive in, in the monthly chart as well. Days young, but so far leg D continued higher. And that is really important. And that's the reason why uh, gold right now is not acting as well as it should. And this is kind of pathetic. The H is going to an M pattern. Wow. I, I shouldn't say it's pathetic. I should say it's it's very weak. It's very weak. <laughs> so uh, that's it. Now, let's go to our first caller. We've got Michael Long Island. Hi, Michael. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Basil? Uh, I was uh, thinking about uh, getting a tattoo of the uh, Chapman Wave. And I don't think it'll ever go out of style. So what do you think? Oh, about? that's very nice. Except you got to you got to know which peak you're going to put on it, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I enjoyed uh, yesterday's show. Well, you know, sometimes I got to do a little ranting and riding, and, and uh, I agree. Uh, <laughs> you got the right audience for that. But anyway, Wally. Uh, oh, okay, that gives me time to once again for maybe the two hundredth time to renotate Orly, and I'll be back in a moment with Michael in Long Island. We're looking at Orly, which is a riding automotive. I had this <laughs> notated on how many thousand times. Anyway, it's gone. I'll be back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investor Investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar, because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. We're back. Dow's up 61. S&P's up 894. Um, I me didn't mention, uh, yeah, I did mention bonds. Well, the TLT's up 20 cents. It's been running a little bit here, so I'm watching all of this very closely. Meantime, uh... As far as uh, trends are concerned, that whole rotational aspect that I've been talking about that seems to prop the market up when we should be having a much deeper correction, that seemed to have unfolded after that 5% correction. I'm watching a number of different things here. One of the things is that report I gave to my subscribers, not a report, but a very detailed account of the S&P and, and, and the Dow uh, monthly charts and, and where we are in relation to other times in this particular leg, that is so potent uh, uh, a, a visual that it's just it's it's like uh, it's mind-boggling, and so far that's been acting very well. That 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 analysis. So I'm going to go back to Michael Long. I we're looking at Orly O R L Y trading at 117.07 down 31 cents. In leg D in the daily chart, in leg. I'm going to call this leg C in the weekly chart because everything about it says, yeah, EFG could be a G, but there's really nothing at this particular point to say that it's a G technically. And the monthly chart, there was a peak F. I call that a peak F. I remember that from the black back background charts when all he made its high, all time high at 106.82, no, 107.13 in May of 2012. Let me just type that in. 107.13. Um, and then it pulled back. And it pulled, I mean, 
this is, that was a pretty dramatic pullback down to the 7561 level <coughs> hmm. just trying to get rid of this cough um, and now what we've got is either a leg hmm, I call that a C <coughs> hmm, scratch scratch alright that's a little better Okay, in in the monthly chart, so far I don't actually have anything negative, so I don't have to fuss too much because the stochastics at 92% and the MACD is still very good. I'm going to do a little more work to see what I will decide because this is one of those things where it absolutely was a PKF, everything pulled back, uh, MACD, stochastic and all, except that the MACD flattened out quite quickly and then crossed back to positive. And that says that there could be an alternate wave count. If that was an instant restart, which we've had a ton of in monthly charts, very unusual, that would say to me that we could, in fact, be making the right arm extension. But no, not if the MACD, if the technicals are working in unison, together, in concert, you've got to say, uh uh, call this at least G slash C for now, with an emphasis more on the C, and the C goes back to that being a peak D. With a, with a down arrow and an up arrow on the uh, we, uh, in February of 2011 to go A, B, and now we're in potential leg C, or it could have been an F, and this is a right arm extension to G. I'm going right now with the C to be conservative. More importantly, I have to do the same thing in the weekly. So, uh, now I'm going to ask you the question. I suspect I know the answer, but I'm going to ask the question, Michael, what are you planning to do or have done? I'm looking at it. Uh, I haven't done anything. Okay. I, I I actually think that that's probably the best thing right now. If you were long, I'd just say, you know what? Stay long in your core position. You could take something off if there was uh, if there was a deeper pullback than 160.97. Let's say if it pulled back under 114.81. I say just to be money management part of it. But when you look at AZO in the same category, that's AutoZone, it's the same alternate wave count that I've got there. And I, I, to tell you the truth, I have no choice but to think that that could be not a G, but a a, a, a B in the uh, monthly chart, but definitely I'm calling it an E for now in the weekly and in the daily. This is just a new recycle and it's an A, B, C. I don't know if today's going to be a, a peak or not, so let me just do this. So that's going to be, that's the low bar there, uh, 404.87, 405. So this is going to be A, B, yeah, call it C either way. It's A, B to C. It's an overlapping wave. So uh, 437.23, 437.21, it could be, in fact, turn out to be a peak C right now. I would do nothing, but I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Today is Tuesday. <clears throat> either Thursday or Friday. I would like to look at both of these again, and there's a reason for that. Because at that particular point, we might be in unison with a different, for instance, the I, uh, IWM has been very strong, and it's strong today. It's at almost, yeah, it's at the high today at 100.87. It is in leg B of a brand new buy, buy mode in the daily, and the weekly is just broken out. I'd like to just tie these things together, if you don't mind. So if you want to hold on. Okay, listen, we'll be tying some of this together because we want to look at this rotational aspect. The auto companies are doing well. The auto uh, suppliers, the, the parts, had a fantastic run-up. Is there going to be a rotation there? I'll be back with Mike straight after this. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. We are looking at what Orly. Orly is O'Reilly Automotive. This is the spare parts. Now, I, I forgot to press the button. There it is. Uh, although it's leg D on the daily and it should be pulling back, the strength of the weekly says to me that this is not the time. Now, I, I've been reluctant in my opening calls, my daily service uh, 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 newsletter that goes out, very comprehensive, starts at about 6, 15, 6, 30 in the morning and starts sending charts to my site, um, the, the Chapman Wave, the opening call, and you click on it and you refresh and it keeps coming up and right up until 8.35, that's when the last one goes out, that's my trader's corner. And, you know, I, I've been reluctant to, to go short right here. I, I see some shorts potential. As I say, I was looking at, in fact, ISRG. There are a couple of others that have been on my list. I, I'm not sure I would have got that ISRG. I wanted to watch one more pop-up attempt and then would have been ready, but it didn't do that. Um, I'm, I see the potential for the downside here. It's just a sudden newsy thing that, that just takes the market down. But I'm looking at strength. I'm even looking at strength in sectors that uh, had been very weak. I'm looking at strength in, for instance, today we went long a particular stock that's just been oh, one of the worst that you could ever find. But there's something there that I'm looking at that says that the daily chart is going to lift the weekly, and the weekly will then lift the monthly. But you've got to have the daily chart working. We won't know if it's going to work, but I would love to see the candle that's forming today on this particular stock 
close towards the high. That will be a most fantastic thing if it does that, even though it's leg D in the 120-minute chart, which is one of the reasons it pulled back. So in this, in this concept, what I'm going to say, Michael, is on the, would I go long orly? Well, I would say that if it went to 114 to 113, held above 112, that's the nine period moving average support in the weekly, I would probably think that it could have one more rally to get that leg D, if I, if it is going to be a D in the weekly chart, as long as the technicals remaining pretty good, the stochastics at 90% in the weekly, 92% in the in the monthly, I and flattening out, I like it, and it tells me all about that whole thing about Americans are buying automobiles, but they also are uh, keeping their cars longer, obviously. So will that change? Will we see... A greater proportion of money going towards new cars and not towards keeping old cars with the spare parts and all that. I, I think so, yes, but I don't. Maybe the sign is that this is something we've got to look out for. I'm going to recommend don't do anything now. Let's look at it again on Thursday or Friday to see how it's holding or not holding because I think together with AZO, which is only a leg, uh, what did I say, leg C up in the daily chart, Breaking to a new high leg E in the uh, monthly. Let me just tell yeah. And leg, I don't know whether this is, I, I'm calling this um, a, G, a B slash G in the monthly, which is really very good. I can't believe it. Um, I, I just hold off. But thank you for bringing it to my attention. I'd forgotten about that. I was looking at ASIO when I had a call it the other day. I said it's acting well. And that could go higher to retest the previous high, and it's done that. So hold tight. We'll look at it again together towards the end of the week, okay? Thank you very much for calling, Michael. So let's go to let's go to Joe in Boston. Hi, Joe. Uh, Joe's always listening. I think on the computer, so we got a little delay. Hello. Joe, you there? Hi, yeah, Joe. How are you? Good. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, certainly can. Okay. Hey, um, I want you to take a look at Google and uh, I tell you and let me. Uh, can you tell me if I have this right or not? Sure. Okay, on the daily. Yep. Um, I had that nine ten eighty four peak as a B um, on the daily. That was, yep. you know what I'm talking about there. Yeah, I'm calling that. You remember what? You remember the terminology I use? This is called a gray peak B. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And we're and in. The, yeah, exactly. And, and now, now we're, we're going like to C. And now we're in gray. See, now I'm just doing it to clarify for so many people now using the Chapman Wave methodology. The reason why I like to call it gray is I want to define that this is so far, even if it can go to new highs, I have to call it a re retracement mode because the most important PD was made at 920.16 Google, which is trading now at 904.94, down 15 cents, back on the 20th of May. And oh, round numbers. I forgot to put all those round numbers in. 905 was the round number open, and 905 was the low. What? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, because it gapped up. Okay. And, uh, and then once it breaks 905, that 905 level now becomes really important for two reasons. It went all the way down to 847. Well, 847, that's a $60 decline in a $900 stock, so that's about an 8% decline, and now it's come back, and until it breaks above, now what's so fascinating about these letters, because it didn't take out the left side low bar, all the way from the peak A, the trough before its first peak A, it's 785, back on the 18th of April, there was a brand new uptrend that could be signaled at 847.22, this means that there is a <clears throat> a high-level consolidation, and that if it goes above 920.60, let's just say it does that in this leg, just for argument's sake, not only I'd call it C, I immediately grab the left side D and say this could be E slash C. Why? Because it's a pattern that's called the double top pattern, and I want to be prepared for it, even if the, unless the technicals are really strong, there's a chance it could stall there, and I want to be prepared. So I'll call it gray C, this, it's only a definition, it's not a negative connotation, it is an articulation of where it is at this particular point, under the previous uh, Grand Canyon former top at 920.60. Now what's important is exactly the same thing applies to the weekly. Why? Because it's at peak E from 920, uh, 999... 
920.60 back in the week of the 24th of May. If it goes above it, I can call it F slash B. If the technicals are still strong, I don't have to worry about it. I can just keep calling it G slash C, uh, D to the next one if that's the case. Oh, that's B. Uh, B. F slash B. So, in the meantime, back at the ranch, the, you, you, do you, have you done the weekly chart? Yeah. Okay, you get the E as well, right? Yeah. Okay, now what's really important about this is that every bit of evidence says that Google has made on a monthly basis a huge pattern, sort of a cup pattern, steadily climbing high above the nine period moving average, and there's every reason to think that the monthly leg D is going to start above nine. 10.84, oh, sorry, 920.60, obviously, 920.60, um, and it's going to do it, and it could even do it this week, because so far the action okay. has been really good in Google. Okay. Do, are, are you yeah, in a long? I, 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 yeah, I'm long. I'm, I wanted you to see, um, well, if you, could you look at one more real quick, and I have to kind of hang up, but can you look at INVN for me? INVN or ZN? Yeah, INVN, India, yes. Nancy, Victor, Nancy. Yep, okay, sure. Okay, so you're going to hang up. I'll, I'll be looking at... I'm not going to listen. Okay, thanks. Okay, sure. Folks, we're looking at INVN. This is... Uh, I know that I did this. In Vincennes. Oh, I, I know I did this because it's such a clever name. In Vincennes. And you know sometimes these stocks are clever by half. I like a name to be simple. So when you come up with these fancy... I thought it was clever. But at the same time, uh, people don't quite remember that in Vincennes. They, they, in Vincennes... You've got to actually make an effort to, to, to say sense. So uh, that's got nothing to do with the stock. This is, in fact, in Vincennes. I remember looking this up. I should know it. I think this is, was this Biotech I, uh, in Vin? You see, I don't even know how to spell this now. In Ven Sense uh, Inc. So let's see if I spelled it right. I'm going to get it. Ah. Uh, Let's see, this is, uh, welcome, come in, my, ah, that's right, motion tracking solutions, oh, I remember this, that's, oh, that's why it was so clever, motion, uh, if I can find it, of course, I just said it, now I can't remember what I said, in Vince, uh, well, the leading provider motion tracking, and they call it, it's, it's actually, they've got it as a trademark, uh, technology technology. And I remember reading it and I say, that fits very appropriately. But it's also a little too clever because you've got to learn how to say it and spell it and all sorts of things. Now I'm calling this A, B, C. Now I also got to mention, folks, you know, you, you've heard a number of callers here over the years, and there are some callers that have a really good eye for certain things. Uh, you've heard George call in here, and he's got a real good eye for fundamentals, putting the fundamentals together with uh, with the technicals. Uh, you've heard, uh, uh, um, uh, oh, I'm not forgetting the name right now. You've, yeah, you've heard. I just need to put that in there. Okay, ah, oh, it was a lower low. I, I'm, I'm doing two things at once. Uh, Nine point oh six. 9.12, there you are. You've, you've got people in the den who've asked questions uh, that, that turn out to be just fabulous. I'm trying to c recall now who, who called in the, oh, oh, Freeman the other day, called in because he was looking at Boston Scientific and he had written, uh, typed in BXS instead. And I said, wow, BXS, Bancor South, it looks fantastic. And look at it from the time he called, which was in the, I think it was in the 17s. It's trading at 18.99 right now in Leg C in the weekly. And we've got right now, we've got Joe who calls in. Joe also has a good eye. You've got to remember these people, folks. We've got some wonderful callers. I'm probably leaving out a whole bunch of callers. I shouldn't actually do this because now I'm stuck because I've got to mention everybody. But we have some really wonderful callers here. And know them for what they do and use it. I, I say ser serendipity. All these things come into account. When you are in the stock market, you want to use every resource. When I started in the 1970s, I used to use Joe Granville, uh, his, some of his methodologies, and I'd, I'd learn about Granville and all sorts of things like that. And when, Gran, when I got a signal and coincided with Granville's, I was thrilled because he would be my confirmation. So I love putting things together uh, um, in, in this kind of format. So we, we've got an IN... VN, thank goodness, and I never forgot what it was, otherwise I would have been stuck. INVN is in Vincennes, and it is motion tracking technology. 
And it's a nice monthly chart. It had its initial IPO and it ran from the 8s all the way to the 20s, pulled back sharply, retesting a whole bunch of times in the 8s to the 9 area. Now it's formed a base and it's breaking the resistance line, the 200 period moving average in the monthly. The weekly is in leg D and it's a very quick ABCD. That says you've got to be a little bit careful for a pullback, and the daily right now is looking really great. Oh, it had a gap up. Now, I love this kind of gap up. When a stock gaps up and then never looks back and it says, ha, I'm taking off, and I'm taking off in such a way that um, that gap that you see at the bottom is going to fool a lot of people because they're going to say gaps always get filled, but gaps do get filled but they don't always get full to the time frame that you're thinking. So this is a very good looking stock and it's a leg D up in the daily. Technicals are good, 88% stochastic, make D's expanding. Now, only thing I would say is you probably are long already. That's why you asked about it, Joe. I'm going to suggest two things. One is that the um, in leg D, you don't really want to see a gift back in this particular instance at 1608. You don't really want to see a gift back underneath 14.90, especially 14.90 to uh, 14.75 right now. Because if it does that, the chances are it will overlap into next week and it'll be, um, it'll be, uh, uh, it'll give you a sign in the week to just say, all right, uh, high level consolidation. But I'm not going to tell you to change any position right now. I think if you're in it, it's great. I would do this. If on a shorter term basis you're looking for something to take off, if it spikes up tomorrow and it can get over 1620, it's a 1612 right now, I would make it, even now you could use a trading stop. I prefer to twist the trading stop in a little higher. But if we can get to the 1620s, I would have a trading stop of about 50 cents on some part of the position that you want to pull back and later that could be the weekly pulls back all the way down to the 1530 to the 1439 period moving average in the weekly chart but that's all I would do I would not change my position right now it's looking very good in all time frames INVN trading at 1615 up 57 now I had a bunch of questions would I look at uh, where did it go um, uh, first of all, to show IBM. Well, I said I would do it as part of a contingency here. That means my Dow Quartet. I want to look at them together. GE, IBM, Triple M, and UTX. Uh, GE is acting beautifully. It's up 20, at 23.73, up 41 cents in leg C. We are long GE. The weekly chart is filling. If we can get into the wick of that inverted Roman candle, Chapman Wave Roman candle, uh, back from the week of the 21st of June, if we can get to 23... 23.96 or higher, that would say it could very well test the 24.45 level. That's going to be really important, number one. Number two is that the monthly chart is walking the nine period exponential moving average. And I, I've considered GE to be the laggard, one of the laggards in the Dow. And I suspect it's going to have a really good 2013. Hey, that's my suspicion. We're trying to trade that, uh, position ourselves for that, which we've started doing. Um, and we'll see what happens. So this is a very, uh, it's actually is very good. If it breaks under 23 in the next week, I'd say, whoa, be careful. A, a third test of 2276 is likely. So far, it's really nice action. Then this rotation into the Dow on these different stocks is very important. Triple M, uh, IBM is obviously the next one. IBM going alphabetically. IBM is making the H2 and M pattern. I'm just not impressed with IBM. We had a caller the other day who was short, and I said, yeah, I think that the short position is the way to be in IBM for now. Uh, we've got a break coming up. And I'm going to do a little bit of work uh, on, on IBM. I'll show Triple M and UTX, the other three uh, contingencies in the, in the Dow Court, my Dow Quartet. And then we'll look at uh, some of the home builders. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 72. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. 
If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, the opening call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, the opening call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, folks. I'm Steve Rowe with TFNN.com, and the trend is your friend until it changes. A free special report is now available on the homepage of TFNN.com, and if you have money in the markets, this free report is a must. If your strategy is buy and hold, this report is a must. If you're a day trader, a swing trader, a forex or options trader, or just getting into the markets, this report is a must, and it's the second best gift you'll ever receive. Look, if you buy a stock and the general market is trending in the other direction, you've reduced your odds of buying at the right time by 70%. Instead, let me teach you how to get that 70% advantage plus. The plus is a free trial to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. There's no upfront deposit, no charge to your credit card, and I can press decades of education into each daily newsletter. This is a limited time offer, so act now and I'll teach you how to take the trend and turn it into your best friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, coming up next, we've got, uh, oh, special hosts of the Options Hour coming up next, Sarah Lenane and Melanie Reeves. Folks, be sure to call in with your questions and options during the Options Hour here on TFNN. Coming up next. Oh, that should be very interesting, very interesting. Great show, always. Now, I just want to quickly look at the XHB, that's the S&P Home Builders. Now, look at this chart. You see this, it goes, this, this little arch formation? Look at Apple. You see this little arch formation? Look at um, the XAU. You see this little arch formation? There's a big difference. This arch formation, the XAU, is, comes after the H goes to an M, lowercase h goes to a lowercase m pattern that breaks down, and now we've got another one which is having a really tough time. Why? Because the dollar just extended up in leg D. That is a powerful move in the dollar, right? And the MACD and the stochastic are absolutely very strong in the daily charts. So trying to I want it pattern to pattern, right? So let's go to back to the Apple pattern. The Apple pattern says, hey, 
nice action. This has been a successful left side, right side uh, price time match 385.10 low of April the 19th. Goes to peak C minus, fails A, and then again it goes to A, B, C, D. Why didn't I finish that up? It goes to A, in the chap wave A, B, C, D, down arrow. Pulls all the way back, and then it holds about 385. It goes to 388.687. Now it's in leg A. So there's a chance now that Apple, as the rotation comes on, maybe in the next few days we start to see some of the stocks that have been stronger start to have a little bit of a pullback. Maybe you start to see Apple. If Apple can break above uh, 423.29, no, if Apple closes above, it can't just break, it has to close above, and the stochastic is able to rise from 62% to about 68 or 73%, I say, great. That says now you've got a chance to test the doji candle of the 18th at 434.90. Otherwise, you're going to fail, make another H pattern. So, so far, the action today is a very big plus, but at any time this week, if you see Apple below, oh, Below today's low for sure, but let's go to 409. If it closes under 409 or it's going under 409 at any point on any day, be careful because that's an H pattern. And what's fabulous about knowing this whole thing with the H pattern is that when you've got the 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly holding so well so far, the MACD deflecting higher, stochastic making a positive divergence it says yes there is a chance that apple's going to remember talked about this a long time ago makes the h that goes to an m pattern as a chance to do that needed to go through that uh, gringo in the den asked about that i was also asked uh, mentioning uh, len i did this yesterday i think it was on some of the uh, home builders i think the home builders are just having a really much needed time out <coughs> oh, that's another cough and Lenar has made the H pattern but failed. To, it's gone to a lower low. So, yes, it could bounce, but I don't think it's going to be turned. It's going to go sideways. I think Lenar and many of the other home builders need time. Now, they've had a fantastic move up, very sharp move down. Now, they need to start forming a base. Maybe not that much further to go down, but they need time. So, talking about time, we've got, uh, we've got a great options hour coming up. Sarah Lenane and Melanie Reeves coming up. <coughs> oh, cough, cough, another one, huh? And uh, let me do this just before we're about to wrap up because the VIX index, you know how much time I spend on the VIX index in all these years, is at 14.43. It's made a lower low. It's gone below the support, and the support that's really important is 14.27 from the 30th of May. So we're going to watch this real closely. A low VIX is buying pressure. That buying pressure is showing up in the rotational moves to the upside. Hey, thanks for being here. Be back tomorrow. Don't forget my opening call to my service, my daily service on TFNN. Just check it out, two weeks free. And I uh, love being here, and I'll be back tomorrow. Stay tuned for great programming all day. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.